Hello everybody, this is Manu S and welcome to another Eternal News video series. Um, this week we're gonna get a nice new balance patch. So, some interesting news here. Um, first of all, we're gonna get a nerf to everybody's hated least interactive card, the solo. Although I'm not super happy with how they nerf it. Basically, they just increase the cost by one and the only buff he gets to make up for it is reducing the ultimate from 10 to 7, making him basically dead in terms of competitive constructed. Um, I would have liked to see to at least uh, give him also plus 1 plus 1 or plus 0 plus 1 or plus 1 plus 0 in the process to <coughs> um, keep his um, cost to stat ratio still the same because I feel like making him an entire turn slower and putting him into a cost slot where the deck that plays it already has 12 four cost cards is more than enough of a buff to make him much worse at racing aggro with the falchion like turn three with solo into turn four falchion uh, was a good way to beat aggro decks with this deck having to do this turn four and turn five and also wasting uh power turn five to do so uh especially when turn five is the turn you usually want to drop Tavrod um, would already be a significant nerf, but now it's just an overcosted, underpowered card in um, that's too slow and in a curve slot that is already like really chock full. So I feel like um, Argentport has to be completely rethought if it can survive this change because Tavrod was one of its essentials and the Pesolo plan was the other one. And also Pesolo was what justified running Falchions and um, to an extent blood letters and <clears throat> without Bitholo Falchion becomes a lot lot worse and also making indirectly Tavrod worse because less hits for Tavrod means he has less impact when he lives. But yeah, that's what we gotta live with. I would have rather seen a an ultimate of eight or nine and a stat boost to Bitholo in conjunction with the cost increase. To simply make him slower and give the opponent more time to deal with it rather than simply just make it one more expensive and ruining the stat to cost ratio um, significantly. In my book, Bethalo is dead. <clears throat> Alright, on to better news. We get a bunch of buffs to further um, improve on some of the lackluster set 2 cards, especially the lackluster set 2 set two alliances, Xenon and Horu, and to some extent Praxis. So we get two cards buffed in each of the three, which is really sweet. So let's take a look. First we have Varus Choice. Varus Choice <coughs> um, before cost three, one time, one shadow, was basically unplayable. Not even great and limited, but okay. And in Constructed it was basically terrible. Now it's actually interesting. It's still not a great main deck card in most strategies, simply because it's basically as primary mode, discard, uh, like silence a hand a unit in hand and discard it. And unit only discard is not that good because you can deal with most units with removal while gaining tempo rather than wasting tempo and trading one for one. And the bounce only as like a secondary mode because you know, it's card disadvantage uh, in most cases. Um, so this card is definitely going to be super interesting, though, as a sideboard card. It's a great sideboard card against slow midrange decks, especially ones with a lot of immediate value gaining units. Like, for example, Varus Choice is going to be an incredibly powerful sideboard card against Big Compre, for example, in Xenon Killers. So this is definitely going to matter for the upcoming tournaments of the wild card and wills itself not so much for later i think um beckoning lumen this is the change that i like the least and found find the weirdest because lumen at five four six four was pretty decent it was soft to auric runehammer which was a problem but now it dies to like everything the thing is as a five three it not only dies to torch sort of ikaria and the newly buffed Purify that I'm going to talk about in a moment, but also it's basically terrible as a board presence, because 
with three healths you can only block like one drops and some two drops there's even some two drops you can't block without trading and everything above you basically just trade with or, or worse just don't even trade with them just die to it so um, now it's like super fragile doesn't provide any board presence and competes with more cards like titan and katra and stuff so um, I really don't like that change. It's a weird change and I don't think it's going to matter much. Next one is an awesome one and one that I honestly didn't see coming. Like I didn't expect them to do this, but it's great. It's definitely a, a pretty big power boost. Purify now costs two instead of three. <clears throat> and given that it's a fast spell um, and in terms of removal, more powerful than Torch, even though it's less efficient, makes it super appealing now. Um, this is a great card that will see a lot of play in main decks and sideboards. Um, I can easily see two to three in a lot of main decks and a whole four in a set of 90 in a tournament deck, for example, because having a silence for some big utility units on a fairly cheap, fairly efficient removal that deals with most of the units in the early game is a very nice uh, flexibility and pseudo split card um, type deal. So Purify definitely going to help Praxis a fair share in dealing with cards like Tavrot, for example, which is currently holding back Praxis significantly. And then we have Moment of Creation. The card was simply horrible before, in my opinion. Um, I talked about how it stacks up math-wise with like Similar cards like um, Great Parliament and so on. Now at least at 7 cost, um, the card is more likely to do something a bit more unique and has the potential to have a high enough ceiling to be interesting. I still don't see it mattering right now because there's just not enough good spells in Praxis and the card requires you to be heavily in Praxis to work towards this but it might be a card that could become interesting and relevant at some point, maybe at least. Now the card doesn't look like a joke anymore, it at least looks kind of like a card. Still not like a good or great card, but like a card. Before it was just a farce, in my opinion. Okay, um, on to the horror cards. Um, Nostrix, Lord of Visions, definitely the triple influence six drop that has had the least light of day and impact so far, and changing the mentor buff from plus three plus three to plus five plus five might might finally be enough to uh, give nostrix a shot because basically being a i think six six flyer himself and providing another plus five plus five in stats on the board basically 11 11 in stats with some downside um, plus the potential buff to units in your hand or deck that you will draw that also have the buff is um, now very much worse considering uh, worth it considering to make it work and find find a home for this. And last but not least, we have a really sweet buff that I like. Shelter Wing Rider is now an 05 instead of an 04, so basically a 55, making it much less vulnerable to. Um, the bane that is already Grunhammer that before made it so yeah I have this Aegis 4 drop but it just dies to one of the best cards in the game that ignores Aegis at an even rate and yeah it's just not worse to jump through all the hoops of double primal double justice and being horror in the first place just to yeah, lose it that way, plus the downside of anything that pops the Aegis turns it into an 04 wall. Now it's at least an 05, so it means it can also block a lot more stuff. Pretty nice, like it's it's definitely going to make the card a bit more appealing and a bit more robust and well-rounded. Still not sure if this is going to do <clears throat> a ton to Horo, honestly, because Horo still has a lot of issues in terms of answering some stuff and especially because you know Oru is just mentor is just such a kind of bad and uh, slow constructed mechanic that 
it might still not do that much but at least for people that really want to make it work and enjoy horu can have some more fun and some more success with it now i guess okay <clears throat> also one last note it's really nice and considerate of um dire wolf to consider to keep in mind the um third party tournament series and providing the balance changes up front so people can consider them and test with them in mind for the upcoming tournaments rather than be like ambushed by them or having to play the tournaments <clears throat> in a way without them which would be even harder because you basically would have to ban the cards which also would be bad so they would have they would basically just play with the changes with one day to figure them out or whatever so that's definitely nice of dire wolf to show some appreciation there and uh take that into account all right i all in all like this balance patch i don't like how they uh, rebalanced batholo i would have liked a little more um yeah sensible um balance um of batholo rather than um rather than just basically crushing his um, stat utility to cost ratio the way they did. But that's what we have, and a lot of people are happy about it, I imagine. So whatever, by Batholo. It was fun while it lasted, at least for the one controlling the Batholo, usually. <laughs> All right. That's it for this Eternal News video. Patch will drop today or tomorrow, I think. Um, no specifics on that, but usually it's Thursday or Friday afternoon in Europe that it drops. So since I haven't seen an announcement yet, I would assume it's more likely tomorrow, but I'm not entirely sure. All right. <clears throat> Thanks for watching, guys. Enjoy the new card changes. Once we get them, let me know in the comments what you think of the buffs and the nerf. And see you next time. I'm out.